half in the bag. Mike, why aren't you on your phone? You should be calling and texting people. Don't you realize it's the last day before the government shuts off the cell phone towers? I know, I know. They found out that the 5G network really is spreading coronavirus. Who the fuck cares? Fuck my cell phone. Everyone I know is dead anyway. Fuck! Well, even still, today is a day of mourning. It's been exactly one month since China sent 500 naval ships filled with hundreds of thousands of people infected with the coronavirus to the beaches of California. They flooded the state, just fucking coughing on everyone. And now almost everyone in California is dead and the virus is slowly making its way east. Yeah, and yet still Disney is altering their movies to appeal to the Chinese market. But think of all the celebrities we've lost. Who will be the guiding light to our wayward souls during these troubling times? Come on, Vogue, I can go. Let's go eat some fried fish. Who will entertain us with their hilarious and uplifting videos filmed from inside their gigantic mansions? Or doing a live stream where they talk about themselves. You know, to raise money for bird sanctuary charities. The complete lack of worry on their smiling faces as they know deep in their hearts that they have enough money to never have to work again and to never leave their house if they don't need to. And it doesn't make me despise them at all. Yeah, the truly tragic part is that without maids and groundskeepers, they'll have to clean their own homes. I get kind of choked up when I think about Bette Midler having to push a vacuum around her 40,000 square foot house. Hey, what are you, what are you watching? Oh, you know, I'm watching that new Invisible Man film in 4K, no less. Mike, I don't think that- Jay, Jay. Just let me have this. Park it. It's a little wavy lines. Wait. And my favorite scene. It's a scene when the invisible man is invisible. He's walking around doing stuff. He's up to no good, that invisible man. Oh, just lost signal. No more cell phone service. This is just a paperweight now. <laughs> My phone's ringing. Hello? Mom and Dad? Oh boy, it sure is great to hear from you, especially after all those years ago when you told me that you no longer had a son. What's that? You're proud of me? I'm not an embarrassing failure? Ah, oh, it's so good to have closure on this matter after all these years. Well, you two stay safe. Okay, bye. I'm getting a signal. Maybe you shouldn't have used Sprint. Mike, I'm not getting any service. I really don't... Ah, uh, never mind. Hey, since you're watching The Invisible Man, why don't we talk about that and some of the other things we've been watching while we're stuck in Mr. Plinkett's house? What a great conclusion to this wacky setup. Stand your side of the fence. This chicken wire is medical grade. Nothing can pass through it. Not even droplets from coronavirus. What should I have to drink? I'm gonna drink another zombie dog. <sighs> Remember before the quarantine when we didn't start drinking till after 3 p.m.? Well, it's what, 7 a.m. now? Yeah. So is that really late from the night before or really early? Oh, fuck. Come 
What are you doing over there? I can't see you through this fence. You know what Robert Frost said? Fences make good neighbors. And fences keep out coronavirus! <laughs> well, the 5G network may be down, but streaming television isn't. All those servers running 24 seven. We're polluting the air with so much carbon. It's like we're flying 20,000 jets every person, every second. Look, we're all stuck inside. What are we supposed to do? Read a book? Go for a walk? Foster animals? Donate to a charity? I want to watch Tiger King, damn it! Well, you brought it up. You want to talk about Tiger King. Everyone's talking about Tiger King. Tiger King. It's not every day that a zookeeper went to prison for murder for hire. There are more captive tigers in the U.S. than there are in the wild throughout the world. You go ahead. You, I, I, uh, I watched three episodes and I had to stop. Oh, you got that far into it. Okay. Yeah. I know you said you watched a little bit of it. I assumed you watched the first episode and were like, fuck this. I'm, no. not I'm not dealing with these people. I was slightly interested, and, and then, I, yeah, it made me want to take a shower. It's, re it's really, uh, how, when they got into the, like, the one guy who was like a polygamist. Yes, and then, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, the reaction to it has been weird. Because people are, like, making memes, and, like, Joe Exotic is, he's this kooky guy. Hmm. And it's like, no, he's a scumbag. All these people are horrible. It's, it's a really uh, uh, dark... A uh, gross show, but people are reacting to it like it's this kooky thing, which is weird. Yeah. I mean, Joe Joe Exotic. I, I think it was a fascinating story, uh, but Joe Exotic is like, uh, he's he's a scumbag. I mean, he's abusing these animals. He's grooming young men, young straight men, and like filling them with drugs. So you got him. You got Carol Baskin, who's uh, complaining about Joe Exotic keeping these animals in tiny cages while she herself does the exact same thing. She's also questionable. And she's yeah. very questionable. She may have fed her first husband to a, to a tiger. Um, and then you get to the, yeah, the polygamous guy who's grooming young girls mm -hmm. and has this fucking cult. It's the perfect companion piece to uh, uh, Roar and Grizzly Man. Yeah. In that it, it really uh, pinpoints that these fucking people that have this weird romanticized uh, idea of these wild animals as being this magical thing and using them for their own sort of like narcissistic reasons. Mm -hmm. They're all fucking crazy. Well, they all seem to be like control freaks too. Yeah, yeah. And and if if you can control tigers, then you can control people. And they're, so they're, I'm sure a, some kind of psychotherapist could really break these people down. But there is something there because like, I never wanted to own a tiger. Yeah, exactly. I, I've never wanted to own an exotic animal because... Or you think about the, the grizzly man guy where he, yeah. he like keeps going back to that nature preserve and thinks he has some sort of magical bond with the animals. And it's right. like, no, they're wild animals. They're yeah. going to eat you. And then they do. Yeah. It's a way to, like, uh, the one guy, uh, the polygamist guy, uh, it seems more of a way to lure and control people. And he, yeah. and, and on top of that, he's like a, a cultish pervert. Um, so the, the allure of tigers and that lifestyle of, of, uh, of his encampment was attractive to that one. I saw the part where they interviewed one lady who escaped the cult. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, yeah, I was like 17 or 18. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to work with, with these tigers. And, and then he said, oh, yeah, honey, oh, no. take off your clothes. And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, and then I read some kind of spoiler somewhere that said the, this was not included in the documentary, but after, I guess, Joe Exotic goes to prison. I didn't get that far. He does, um, yeah. But they show it in the show. They, he call, he's calling from prison. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I assume he went to prison. I don't know what for exactly, possibly trying to murder Carol Baskin. Yes, for hiring <laughs> someone to murder Carol Baskin. <laughs> uh, but they're like, uh, the show went up in his attic, and they found a bunch of weird S&M stuff, and then they found stuffed tigers, not stuffed animal tigers, but like taxidermied tigers mm. with like, like a fuck hole in the mouth and, and in the butt. Oh. So he was, him and his, his husbands presumably were 
doing some kinky stuff, or he was in his private time uh, sexualizing dead tigers, and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Come here, love me. Come here, love me. I'm gonna go watch Cheers. <laughs> Cheers is in HD now, by the way, on Netflix. They remastered it all. It looks gorgeous. Fuck yeah. The last time I binge watched that show, it was still like, uh, it looked like VHS masters. Cheers. You're making your way in the world today. Takes everything you got. But yeah, I really enjoyed Tiger King. I thought it was a fascinating story. Drinking away all your worries. Hey, <laughs> let's do a shot. Hey, there you go. Wouldn't you like to get shit faced? Sometimes you eyes grab a vision. That's how the song ends. Mm, 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 mm. And you're always glad you're social distancing. Cheers is now closed. Sorry, right. we're closed. Uh, yeah, so that's Tiger King. I, I, like, I think it's very well done. Uh, it's just interesting to see what people have gotten out of it and how people find it funny when it's just incredibly upsetting. But it's, it's, I think it's worth watching, but if you think it's too disgusting or having to watch these horrible people, I can understand. <laughs> it's, up, it's up to the individual viewer. Sure. Because you have trash television that's fascinating and uh, kind of fun to watch. 90 Day Fiance, Before the 90 Days, um, which is just fucking wonderful, or My 600 Pound Life, uh, or uh, there's all sorts of great programs on TLC. My 600 Pound Tumor. My 600 Pound Tumor. Dr. Pimple Popper, the lady that, oh, that pulls shit out of people's bodies. See, that I can never, ever watch. Yeah, it's fucking gross. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, like, I don't know, there's those shows that, like, the, the reality shows that are, like, of sketchy people your uh honey boo boos and duck dynasties and all that shit and I, I don't i don't like that stuff yeah but um the characters in it while odd and eccentric and oftentimes kind of gross there's always a little bit of heart or likability and this tiger king show oh everybody's awful it just seems like it's awful yeah. and um you didn't even get to the guy that supposedly Scarface was based on? Oh, I did see that episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. The guy's talking. He's like the most likable guy in the movie, and he's a murderer. <laughs> what, am I, what, what, what am I going to tell the feds now, or the judge? Your Honor, I did not shoot him, and I did not use the, I did not use the circular saw on his neck. It was somebody else. What difference does it make? I'm still there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about Tiger King. I'm just picturing the filmmakers, though. They, they start filming this, this documentary series, and realizing how absurd every character is and being like, we just struck gold. Let's talk about movies though. That's why we're here, Jay. Okay. That's our show, Half in the Bag. It used to be before the dark times. Before the dark times, <laughs> before the coronavirus. <laughs> BC, right? BC. Hey, there you go. Wrote before coronavirus. Yeah. And AD. After death. After death. AV, after vaccine. Oh, there you go. So, Jay, let's talk about a movie that we both saw. Uh, one of the very last films to come out in movie thea theater, theater, theaters. What were those things called? Movie, they called them movie palaces way back in the day, I think. Movie houses. Yeah, in the 21st century, they were called theaters. Now they're called uh, abandoned strip malls. Yeah, now they're abandoned. They're mega churches now. <laughs> um, but uh, now they're all closed and they're never going to reopen. No. Because the world has woken up to the fact that you could watch movies in your home. And the studio system has woken up to that fact. The yes. world has forever changed Yeah. Uh, after coronavirus. Um, but we both watched The Invisible Man. Yes. Uh, that played in the theaters for half the coronavirus epidemic. Played pandemic. long enough to make some, some decent money. And then they said, early release on VOD. Yeah, well, that's something we should talk about before talking about the movie is yeah. the whole uh, uh, release strategy. Because it's, it's, it's very, people are very divided. It, it's exclusive early access or whatever they were calling it, but it's 20 bucks to rent for 24 hours, 48 hours? 
Uh, and people are like, oh, that's too expensive. Other people are like, that's fucking great. I got a household of five, six people. Yeah. It's only one price. So I think it, yeah, I think it just depends on your, your outlook. I am more than happy to spend $20 to not go to a movie theater. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity to watch something at home. But it also depends on your setup, I guess. Yeah, and the $20, I think, is the perfect median price. Because, like you said, there could be somebody who lives by themselves, or there could be somebody with a household of 10 people. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, $50 is a little too much. 10 is a little too low, because someone's going to take advantage of it and have 10 people over at their house. So, $20. I think $20 is perfect. It was this and The Hunt, the, Blum yeah. the other Blumhouse movie. Mm -hmm. The only way to really calculate this is to have like a big tentpole movie like the Wonder Woman movie that was supposed to come out. Or Black Black Widow, Black one of Widow. those type of yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, something like that that's a big like Marvel or Disney kind of thing and just say, okay, here it is, boom. Because they have projections of, of based on past movies, you know, like when, when Wonder Woman 1984 comes out, it's expected to make this much. Yeah. And they, they base it on past models and all this analytics and data and stuff. And now everything's out the window. Now, now, yeah, so it would be like a situation where they would have to like dip their toe in the water, so to speak, put Wonder Woman out on streaming on every possible platform around the whole world all at once and see how much money they make. Yeah. And if they make, you know, half of what they would in the theaters, then they would definitely pull back and say, we're going to wait till movie theaters reopen. If they made more money then they would side with theaters and yeah. say, we want the audience to have a theater-going experience. So you mean they'd lie? They wouldn't say, we want whatever will make us the most money. They, yeah, they were uh, being sarcastic there. Yeah, yeah. They, they would say, fuck you, movie theaters. Well, movie the, the first movie that did was supposed to go in theaters and went directly to VOD is the Trolls movie. Yeah, how'd and that do? I don't know. That's the thing is they don't have to... Yeah. Give these numbers out so nobody knows. So it's also a way to avoid people knowing that a movie is a flop in future releases. It's kind of yeah. like trying to find out how many people actually watch Star Trek Picard on CBS All Access. <laughs> there you go, yeah. It's a big hit, Mike. It was announced for a second season before the first season even aired. Mm. That definitely wasn't announced just to get people thinking that the show was going to be worth watching. Yep. But yeah, yeah, they don't have to announce their money. They could just, you'll know if it made them money if more movies appear on VOD. That's yeah. the only real way to test it. And, and that's why this has been so interesting because we've been talking about the death of theaters forever. I would gladly stay at home and watch movies as opposed, there's stuff I'd watch at home that I wouldn't bother to see in theaters. Mm -hmm. But I'll pay 20 bucks to, you know, just watch it at home. Mm -hmm. Then there are some movies that are nice to see in a big, big movie theater. Uh, less and less. It's, 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 it's more so the theater-going experience than the movies themselves. Yeah. I, th I think when we did Avengers Endgame, I may be wrong, but I think we called that like the last blockbuster. Mm. Little did we know <laughs> that it would be forced to be the last blockbuster. I mean, you can't really call Rise of Skywalker a true blockbuster. Oh no, that was uh, that was a funeral. It did well. <laughs> it did well. Like it made money, of course, as it would, but uh, it wasn't a phenomenon. Nobody like, liked like, it. Yeah. The future is unwritten, Jay. Only time will tell. The only certainty we have is that Quibi will flop. Quibi. What happened to him? He dreams dead. Uh, yeah, Invisible Man was, was, was really enjoyable. It was a nice uh, take on the Invisible Man character. Uh, Should we be worried about spoilers? Oh. Spoilers, whatever. It's been out. It's been out a long time. I saw some people complaining about the way he becomes the Invisible Man in this. How it's like a, like a, like a suit, like a scientific suit. It was like, they were saying that's like silly. It's like, does it matter? The original story, he drinks like a magic potion. Well, okay, that's, that's silly, how the Invisible Man becomes the Invisible Man. Uh, because this movie is not about an Invisible Man. Uh, well, real quick. The whole movie's about uh, being in an abusive relationship. And gaslighting. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, and that's what the whole movie is about. It's not about the Invisible Man. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a very metaphorical movie about relationships, specifically abusive relationships, like you said, gaslighting, um, 
and the opening of the film is uh, Elizabeth Moss is trying to escape the relationship. Uh, yeah, it just goes right into it. It starts off, yeah, and you know, he like she's she's sleeping in her bed, and his hand is over her, you know, it's just a symbol of her him being controlling. Uh, she she knocks him out with some Valium, uh, and she's planned her escape from his massive compound like house, mm. where in the basement he does some kind of scientific experiments. And all we see is just some stations and some things. We we get every all the information we need in this opening scene without like any. I think I'm quoting the Phantom Menace review, but without a line of dialogue. Right, right. <laughs> it's a show, don't tell, as yeah. they say. I'm picturing a more generic movie where you have, like, the first 10 minutes is showing him being an asshole to her. Yeah. It's like uh, her performance, too. She's so great because it conveys all that without having right. to show any of it. She's obviously terrified, and she's obviously planned this out meticulously how to escape this guy. Mm -hmm. And so you that you're like he must be pretty fucking terrible. Yeah, that first 10 minutes is frightening. Mm -hmm. It's very like nerve-wracking cuz oh, you, yeah. you know the fear of her getting caught without having even seen this guy's face. Right. Um it's really well done. Uh, and then yeah, she's got her 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 go bag, her escape bag with all of her stuff in it and um uh, she escapes, and then, yeah, the rest of the movie is, uh, besides for this guy being an abusive, controlling monster, he's a monster. He's a universal he's monster. He's a classic universal monster um, for the modern age. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, he just... He really wants to control her and, and get back at her for leaving him. Yeah. Well, and convince everybody else that she's crazy. Yeah. If I had one complaint about the movie, it's that there's probably a few too many scenes that say exactly that. I mean, that's, sure. that's the movie. Yeah. You know, it's not her going, like, back into the lab and trying to figure out the invisible suit and getting her own and then fighting him. Yeah. With, with, where there's two invisible suits. The, the technology of the suit is brushed off as like, oh, it's cameras and mirrors. Like, yeah, it really doesn't matter. That's a real thing. That's a real thing, though. Sure. Right. But they, don't, they don't feel the need to over-explain it no. or make sure that it's realistic because it really doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. The yeah. point is, is she's trying to escape an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do have that. So they were working on that technology where you have a little video thing uh, and, and on your back is a camera, and the camera shoots what is behind you. Don't try and explain it. Adrian is dead. He's not dead. He has figured out a way to be invisible. They don't explain how it makes him uh, uh, super strong. He, he kind of has, like, super strength when he's wearing that outfit. He's, like, picking people up off the ground and holding them up. Just, it's probably easy and to he's, throw And he's Elizabeth extra Moss silent. Around. Somehow he's completely silent. Easy to throw Elizabeth Moss around. She's a <laughs> tiny lady. Okay, fair enough. These are my only complaints about the movie because I really liked it overall. I like the the execution of a lot of the scenes. It just like hangs on these wide shots. So she's like coming and going from the room, and it's just this flat wide shot, and it gets you like scanning around the entire frame. Like where where is he? What's going to happen? That shot where uh, he turns up the fire. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, See, it's really good at building the tension. But you build, that's that's what it did. Build the tension, uh, and then the, it starts with him trying to start the fire, and then uh, he she slaps the daughter. Remember? Yeah. And then it's slowly like people not believing her and thinking she's crazy. And you know, like I'm sure that's happened to a lot of women out there, where their husbands or or boyfriends are just awful, and they try to make them look crazy in front of other people mm -hmm. uh you know to the nth degree in this movie and i love at the end it's not like uh, i'm picturing a, again a dumber like simpler movie where it's like they have the confrontation on the rooftop in the rain it's like no there's no big exciting action scene at the end it's them at a, at a, at a dining room table it's so understated oh it's yeah, really that, well done yeah yeah there's so so you, yeah, you got this. You got this nice little buildup of, of all this stuff, and then there's there's your your third act twist. You throw that in there. It's enjoyable to watch watch um, uh, her performance in it because really that's that's all there is. I you mean, get the wrong wrong person in that role, and the whole movie falls yeah, apart. She's yeah. really really good. Yeah, because she's got that that she's got that vulnerable quality to her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very small in stature. That that scene when she musters up the courage to go out and get the mail. 
Oh yeah. And and she she leaves the house and she's just she's walking, you know, like all timid and um, she's got her her back is like hunched. It's a great physical performance from her. Um, and then she looks like a fucking wreck in the, <laughs> in the uh, insane asylum. Yeah, you know, yeah no vanity uh, yeah. as far as an actor goes. This is right. like the polar opposite of the Tom Cruise mummy movie. Yes. Where it's like, look at how, how buff and badass I am. Yeah. Was that and an then, Alex Kurtzman production? It was, was, it was. I was just curious. And this was not. Uh, believe it or not, this was not an Alex Kurtzman okay, production. Okay, I just wanted to make, make that clear. Mm. Alex Kurtzman had nothing to do with this film. No, he didn't. Film. Okay. Did Alex Kurtzman, was he involved with Picard? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why that that is a well received program. <laughs> so that's the Invisible Man. It's worth watching. I I think it's worth twenty bucks. Absolutely. You don't own it. You're just renting it. But I really liked it. It was very classy. Classy, and, uh, yeah, that's a good word for it. And it felt like it was about something bigger. It, it, didn't, without... it didn't feel like a schlocky Blumhouse movie. No, um, it, but it felt like it was about something bigger, something more important, uh, without being hit you over the headish. Right. Uh, and I'm I'm really surprised that the the quote armies of of man babies, and you know, like what when when a movie like this comes out, which is clearly like. Um, uh, uh, misandrist, yeah. is, that, is that right? Um, where it's just like, oh, this movie's just about something. SJW propaganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised those little trolls didn't come out <laughs> everywhere. I, you make a good movie that isn't hitting you over the head with nonsense and uh, is actually a quality film that's about something. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes a difference. Yeah. It's a great way to remake The Invisible Man in a modern era. Mm -hmm. Without the the schlocky uh, uh, costume, although I, there were there were a couple of nods there that were. Fun. Oh yeah, there's a guy that's wrapped in bandages yeah, in the we, hospital. We a couple of little nods. Uh, and only a seven million dollar budget grossed over a hundred million. That's the best part. That budget is under ten million dollars. I hope uh, Elizabeth Moss got some. Uh, Good contracts on that. Got some points on that on that back end. All I know is she won't be nominated for an Academy Award. No. She should be, but she won't. She'll get. I, I call it Tony Collette'd. The year Tony Collette didn't get nominated for Hereditary, even though it's one of the best performances ever. Yeah. Last year it was Lupita Nyong'o. She got passed over for Us. Mm -hmm. Now this year it's going to be Elizabeth Moss. Because it's a horror genre. Yeah. They Jake? don't like those schlocky horror movies. Yeah. Even when they're not schlock. Hey, you know what? This is this next next Oscars. There's going to be uh, very few competition. It's going to be uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Moss versus a, a troll, right? Best actor, <laughs> Gl Glorba from from Trolls Two, uh, and Elizabeth Moss. Uh, oh, that's yeah. all we got. Yeah. That's all that came out. Everything's been held back. So it'll be like the, the, the CGI troll will be sitting in the seat. Everyone will be four <laughs> seats just apart. Be, uh, no, it'll just be on Zoom. Everyone will be in, oh, their, it'll be everyone like, will be in their den. Yeah, it'll, it'll be like one of those like, like pixelated images. Yeah. Like the Truman Show poster, you know, where it's like... <laughs> and that's how, so many people. And yeah. then it'll, it'll be like, Best Actress nominees. And it'll, it'll zoom in. <laughs> and it'll just be Elizabeth Moss and the troll. Yeah. Like a little cartoon <laughs> troll. <laughs> <laughs>